This self-portrait by my student, Brooklyn Burgos, exemplifies many of the qualities our class has been seeking, both last semester in our techniques and design class and this semester in the painting class. Note, first of all, how rich the color feels. The color makes the volumes in depth. It doesn't just lie on the surface or tint drawn planes. Every stroke of paint is intentional in its shape, its direction, its location, and in its tone or pitch. The artist has not gone back and tormented the paint. The touch is fresh and alive. Last semester in our design course, we learned about making all the layers of space in a picture interact on the picture plane. We also learned to ask about every line, shape, or nuance in a work of art. What is it doing? How is it acting and moving in relation to all the other elements and to the picture as a whole? We have been reviewing these principles this semester, especially in our museum visit. Here, the lighting is complex with light bouncing up on the head from below. With all the variety of colors in the head, there is a middle tone of the flesh which corresponds to the wall color, and yet is pushed forward from the wall by the black, orange, and red planes. We have discussed how differently the two eyes are treated in many masterpieces. In Picasso, it is obvious. In Raphael, it is more subtle, but just as powerful and is accomplished by the play of the forms of the face with the forms of the background. Likewise here in Brooklyn's self-portrait. See these black planes, which bridge the corner of the room and connect to the blue sweatshirt, being anchored in the sweatshirt by the echoing triangular black shadow in the hood. There is a fine differentiation between a warm black and a cool black, creating movement in space. This edge is vertical, exerting a stabilizing force. The black background grips the head in fascinating and mysterious ways. First of all, it bounds across the brow ridge, then descends to the left eye and the triangular shadow on the lower lid. This movement of black shapes establishes the front plane of the head and holds it in tension with the side plane of the head, which goes back and down in perspective to a marvelously different rhythm of black formed by the contour of the ear and the loose end of the fabric which binds the hair. Paradoxically, this black shape rides along the back edge of the receding plane of the head, while these black planes over here attach to the front plane of the head, even though they are understood to be much farther back in space. This gives rise to the phenomenon my design students know as flip-flop, a supercharger of pictorial space and a common feature of much of the world's great art of all periods and cultures. Note that the perspective of the head unites it with the vectors established in the picture plane by the perspective of the ceiling, once again enhancing plasticity. For this reason, I give my students stereometric schemes for conceiving the parts of the body the muscle masses, etc., as box-like structures. This knowledge pays off here. But such knowledge of stereometry or box-like constructions is only half the story. We learn to combine it with a more fluid, organic sense of design. Space and time are relative, and the warping of space-time gives rise to creative distortions easily observed in Titian, Rubens, El Greco, and, of course, Picasso, and many, many others. Here, this vertical dominates with its length, contrast, and upward pull. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, the top of the head tilts up on that side and down on the other, in dramatic tension with the box perspective, but not before disrupting the edge of the ceiling. The green hair rests securely against the complementary red. Note how easily we move forward from there on the wonderfully articulated planes of the side of the head to the cheekbone and eye socket. This shadow line on the nose 
marks what my friend and mentor Jack Beale, in analyzing old master portraits, used to call the geologic fault line of the head in pictorial space. Everything to the left of it is claimed by this black configuration. Everything to the right of it is part of a different constellation, in which black shapes break up and separate in a field dominated by red, orange, and green with their mixtures. This seismic shift is most evident in the eyes, as the major axis of the left eye socket tilts up in magnetic attraction to the red corner and encounters delightful contrapuntal shapes in the forehead. A surprising brown plane echoes the shapes of the black fabric and swings into place to form a vector axially connected to the hair bun, which in turn calls back to the denser black of the fabric. Swinging around the taut contour of the chin, we come up into the cheek, which, with its orange strokes echoing the background and its upward swelling contour, leads our eye to the deftly applied strokes of green hair. These lyrical strokes just cross the implied vector of the room's corner. This is a climactic moment which, because of the strength of the structure of the whole painting, carries immense energy and pictorial feeling.